made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we come today to say thank you. We just want to thank you for allowing us to rise this morning in our right minds, allowing us to have the mindset to come to union this morning and get this special word that you've given Reverend Milton to give to us, his flock here. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would continue to bless the things that we do here. Lord, let, keep in the back of our mind, in our heart, and our soul that it's not about us. It's about you, Lord. The things that we do on our daily lives, Lord, let it be that it reflects back to someone to say, hey, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we ask that you would go by the nursing homes, that you would go by the rest homes, Lord. Just go by the prison. Just go by everywhere where the people know you and too, Lord, where they don't know you. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to bless the members here at Union, Lord. The ones that are out sick, the ones that had death in the family, whatever it is, Lord, we know you know all about it already in advance. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless our ministries here, our music ministry, our missionary ministry, our deacon ministry, our trustee ministry, our music ministry, the guys back there on the keyboards, and the guys back there that's on that board that's just making the music, where it's coming out where everyone can see it, the pictures on the from the TV screen. Lord, just everything that we do today, let it be done in your name. And this is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I come to the garden alone while I do it's still on the road, and the voice I hear falls on my ear. The voice to be is calling, and he walks, walks with, with me, walks with me, walks with me, and he talks, talks with, me, with me, talks with me, tells me, tells me I. Yes, it does. You know the joy Lord, we share. We share. Lord, we share. Every time. Every there. Every there. Every there. Oh, none other. None other. As ever. As ever. Ever known. No. Well, he speaks with the sound of his voice. But they are so sweet that the birds first are singing. Yes, it does, and the melody that he gave to me will fill my heart still ringing. You know that he walks, walks with me, walks with me, walks with me, and it's all with me, with me, talks with me, tells me, tells me I, me I, I am alone. Oh, yes, it does. It's all the joy. We share. We share. Every time. Every day. 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 Be fallen, but he bids me go to the voice of war. His voice to me is calling. You know that he walks, walks with me, walks with me, walks with me, and he talks, talks with, me, with me, talks with me, tells me, tells me, I have his own. Yes, it does. The joy we share. We share. We share. I will tell you. That is there. Oh, so glad that he walks with me. Walks with me. And he talks with me. Tells me. Tells me. I am his own. Oh, yes, 
we go. Go the door. We share. 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 We Did he walk with you this morning and talk with you and ride with you along the way? Amen. None other than him this morning. We are grateful to God. Thank you to the senior choir for, for this morning's singing and for that selection and all that you're doing, but particularly that old favorite of ours uh, in the garden. We are thankful for you this morning. Thankful to our musicians, to those on our uh, sound system, Brother uh, De Deacons uh, Turner and Deacon Miles. Thank you. Thank you to those on the, uh, the greeters and the ushers this morning. To each of you for being with us in the house of the Lord today. It's a good day to be alive. Any day is a good day, and we are grateful for that. Grateful to see each of you here in this sanctuary this morning. Some, it's been a while, but it's good to see you. Uh, yes, uh, Brother Brown, it's good to see you this morning. Good to see uh, uh, Deacon Robert Rankin. I, I call him my New York uh, member. Whenever he's in town, he tries to come and be with us, and we're glad to have him. We're glad to see each of you here this morning. Those of you who are members, who are here Sunday after Sunday, we are grateful for you, grateful to see those who periodically are able to be with us, Sister Miles and others. We are glad to see you this morning. Glad to have uh, Reverend Hedgepeth on our pulpit today, and we are just delighted for each of you. For those on the airways, wherever you are and on the phone, we are grateful for you. Let me just say a couple of things uh, right uh, at this moment. First of all, we... We say happy birthday to these who are celebrating birthdays today. Uh, Brother Wallace Miles, uh, as he celebrates birthday today, and uh, uh, Norma Jean Corbett uh, is celebrating her birthday today. She had a birthday party yesterday, and we were uh, grateful to be a part of that, and we ask God's blessings upon her. Uh, she's struggling these days, and we ask God's blessings upon her. Say happy birthday to dear Austin. And uh, she begins a new job as well, and we are thankful. And, and to Brooks, uh, feel, Brooke feels as she goes back to school this week, later in the week. And to uh, Douglas Brent Milton, we say happy birthday to him. And to Reverend Donna Van Hook, we say happy birthday to Reverend Donna. Reverend Donna hasn't been here in a while because she's preaching at uh, the Ashboro Church on, uh, on the uh, Sundays now, and we are grateful for her. Uh, and we ask God's blessings upon her, as she also runs for office. And we'll be hearing more about that as, uh, as voting comes closer, because we want to support her as she uh, is uh, moving toward uh, an office in, in uh, politics, and we, we're grateful for her. We are thankful to each of you. There are a number of things going on. I want to say uh, to you that, uh, uh, as I said before, the next uh, for many churches now, and for the church year, it now is, for many churches, is beginning in September. You'll get a new, uh, uh, for those of you who attend Sunday school, your new book next uh, week starts. Uh, we are starting for the next nine weeks. We'll be passing these to one, uh, one per family, but uh, a little uh, book like that. We are going to be following as deacons. This was brought to us. And uh, we, we uh, prayed about it and decided to move on this, thanks to Deacon Dorothy Corbett, who brought it to us. But uh, each Sunday, we're going to be focusing on, on a uh, fruit of the Spirit. And next week is love, and we'll, we, one of the deacons will speak a moment on it. We're going to be asking you to do some things around that to help you uh, look at that and to uh, reflect on, on these over the next few weeks. So that's going to be one of the focuses that, uh, focus that we will be moving on, and we trust that you will uh, uh, support that and, and uh, that you will 
abide by that. Uh, there are other announcements in the bulletin. I am going to uh, Cox, Memorial, Cox Chapel, United Methodist Church in Ramsour this afternoon. Invite any of you that can to go with us there. They are providing a box lunch uh, between the services, so uh, if you like, you can uh, get there in time for that if you're going with us. Uh, thank you for your support of that, and you'll be hearing other things that's going on as the, as the month moves forward. There'll be some other changes as we move into the fall. Um, I'm beginning to ask the question myself, what are we doing that's relevant for 2022? Many of us are caught in uh, how we used to function. I, uh, I saw uh, a uh, uh, book, uh, a uh, uh, bumper sticker this morning that, that intrigued me. You, you've heard the statement, make America great again. I saw a, st a thing this morning that struck me. It said, make America grateful again. I, that, that struck me because many folks have, ha, have moved into rights and think that, it, that I deserve what I get. When you're grateful, you realize that you just to wake up this morning, <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> I didn't deserve to wake up. I woke up because God's grace has been with me. So I, I just, that, that one is free. I just wanted to share that with you this morning. As we, uh, as we move forward. Thank you for what you've given, how, the ways in which you give financially to support this church and uh, mini the ministries and the mission of this church. Thank you also for, for all that you do um, in the community, in the world. Uh, I, I went last uh, um, Sunday following church uh, I went over to see the Habitat House that, that some of our members have participated in. Some gave devotions, some brought food, uh, some worked on the house. We are grateful. I met the folks who were there, the folks were there who, whose uh, house is going to be. And I, that was a good experience for me. And I just wanted to say thank you uh, to, to um, Sister Jerrica Miles, who led that for us, but all of you who participated in that. And thank you for that. Uh, may God's blessings be with you. Let us now pray over our offering. Uh, gracious God, we thank you for this offering, for these offerings, all of the offerings that folks have given, both financially and uh, spiritually and in the community and in the world. Bless us now and keep us in your name we pray. Amen. Let us hear our scripture. Reverend Hedgepeth will come and share that with us. And following that, uh, we will uh, hear a selection from the senior choir. Good morning, everybody. Scripture this morning is going to come from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. The healing of Naaman. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master. By him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Armenians on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when this letter reaches you, know that I have sent you to my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life? 
that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy. Just look, see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a message to him saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Paphar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage, but his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word is I woke up this morning, got out of my bed, I look around, here's what I said, thank you Lord, from the blood he'll shed, you put a roof up over my head, thank you Lord, for another day, all the blessings you sent my way, could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but you told Dad, get back and behave. Ooh wee, Ooh -wee. another blessing. Another blessing. 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 Never sin, the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread i can count on god he won't let me down always do just what he said pain and suffer he brought me through all do be wise always welcome you i've been blessed so many ways i just lift my hand and give him all the praise. Ooh wee, Ooh -wee. another blessing. Another blessing. Ooh, -wee. Ooh wee, another blessing. Another blessing. Ooh wee, Ooh -wee. another blessing. Another blessing. Ooh wee, Ooh -wee. another blessing. Another I got my legs and I can walk. I got my tongue, y'all, and I can talk. Even the air that I receive. I got my lungs, y'all, and I can breathe. When I look around, I can see all of the blessing, y'all. He's here but me. I see my family all doing fine. He gave me peace, gave me peace of mind. Thank God, Thank God, another blessing. Another blessing. Thank, God Thank God for another blessing. Another blessing. Lord, I thank you Thank God for my blessing. blessing. I want to thank the thank Lord God for another blessing. another blessing. I realize thank I could God have been dead. Somewhere sleeping, thank Lord, God in my grave. But you bless me. Lord, you bless me. Lord, you let me see a brand new day. You kept your arms 
wrap around me. You never left me. You never left me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Oh, yes, you have. I got my strength, Lord. Ain't that a blessing? I got my hair, y'all. Ain't that a blessing? I'm glad to see among the living, y'all. Ain't that a blessing, y'all? Ain't that a blessing? Ooh, we another blessing. You put a roof up over my head. You've been a doctor on my sick bed. You've been through when I was born. You've been my friend when I got lonely. I got God. I got God. I got feet. I got feet. I bit the liver. I bit the liver. Ooh wee, another blessing. Ooh wee, another blessing. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Ooh we, I, I got so many blessings that I can't count them. Thank you, thank you to the senior choir for that selection again and what you are doing this morning to make this service what it is. Bow with me in a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for this moment of preaching time. Give us a word that comes from you move whatever might be in our way that we might hear from you not only now but always day by day in your name we pray amen amen From the scripture that was uh, read so eloquently earlier, from the book of Second Kings, we find the words that are the basis for our text this morning and our sermon. Your healing might be in the dirty water. Yes. Uh, it comes from Kings. Um, books that were originally one that, that uh, grows out of a history of Israel. Here we find the history of the kings and the prophets of Israel, particularly in this case, a prophet. Prophets were sometimes outside the, the, the and then there were prophets who were uh, inside, who had some knowledge of the kings and, and had a connection. I think about preachers. You know, Billy Graham was a preacher that, during his life, visited the White House with almost every president. He was a, he was a preacher that had an inside connection. See, if I, if I were to go up there, they would put me out quicker than you because they don't know me. But some uh, prophets got to know the kings and the high ups. The others did not. This was one who did and uh, grows out of the text this morning. Elijah, uh, Elijah, as I have talked about for the last uh, few weeks, uh, miracles that, that he did. Uh, he, uh, there was a poor woman whose husband died and he, he uh, helped her financially to get to where she needed to be. There was a rich woman that uh, had not had a child and he helped her with that. There was a time when he fed people because uh, someone brought him food to eat and he told them to give it to everybody and, and everybody was fed. There was a time when there was stew in the pot and there was death in there but he added some things that made life to it. Then we come to the text today where he's dealing with another miracle. Naaman 
was high up in the army. He was a commander, and he had connections to the king. He had been around and done great things, yet he had leprosy. When you had leprosy in those days, you had to isolate yourself. When folk came around, you had to cry, leprosy, leprosy. Uh, COVID, COVID, I got COVID, don't you come near me. <laughs> see the difference there? Yeah, see, you, 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 we, we're now getting some, some help. It's not cured, but it's help. But, but before, especially, we didn't, if you said, I got leprosy, I mean, if I got COVID, don't come near me. And even now, if you got it, I'll wave at you. Yeah. Well, he had leprosy, which says that, that, that uh, and, and, and in that, there, there was no cure. But this woman, uh, the, the maid, the mistress, the woman who they had stolen from Israel, told him about a man. She told his wife, and she went and told him about a man over in the Israel that couldn't heal you. Notice when you get to that, she says, my Lord, with a little L. And even when he went before the king, he said, my Lord, with, uh, with a little L. Your majesty, we would say, your, your, uh, you know, we, we give some, some words that say, I'm recognizing you and honoring you, but, but the, the, the king wrote a letter to the king. You know, sometimes kings have to deal with kings. You can't just walk in. And so he wrote, and, and in his letter, it was confusing to the king because he said that you can heal this man. And the, the king said, I, am I God? I can't do that. So he goes on then to s when, when, when Elijah hears this, he calls, uh, right, uh, sends out to the king and say, you can't do it, but send him to me. And so the man hurries on over to Elijah. Well, he gets disappointed because he's a person of importance, and he thinks that, uh, that Elijah ought to come out and address him. And so he also assumes that, that Elijah will come out and wave some magic wand over him and say some, some special words. And he's going to be healed. He goes on then when Elijah tells him to go down to Jordan. Now, in that day, Jordan was, was uh, the dirty river. It was the river. Y you know, there are some places where you wouldn't go swim. Around here, there's some lakes, and, and sometimes there have even been swimming pools when they say they don't keep them up, and I wouldn't go swimming in that. Well, Jordan was that kind of river. That's why the man gets angry when he says, you want me to do what? To go to this dirty river and, and immerse myself in it seven times? What kind of mess is this? And yet, uh, he leaves angry, and some folks convince him to do it. And when he does, he's healed. Well, there's some lessons. I, I've been dealing with lessons lately. And, and for me, as I talked with God about this, there were some, some uh, lessons in this. For, for one, no matter who you are in life, Trouble will come to your door. You know, that you are not excluded. I don't care if you're the president. I don't care if you're a homeless person. Trouble will come to your door. Some folks assume that, that money can buy happiness and money can keep you out of trouble. Uh, sometimes uh, money can help you be happier. If your bills are paid, many of us are a little happier than if they're not paid. Uh, many of us, uh, you know, we, we, we can in, circulate in some circles if you got a little money. 
you can get to some some higher places. You know, you can go to to the Biltmore if you'd like, if you got a little money. But going to those places doesn't prohibit you from having trouble sometimes. That's the that's the 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 one of the lessons here. The commander was a person of wealth and power, and his money couldn't heal him. There are folks sometimes who who go to the best doctors. I know one time Louise was when when she first started getting arthritis, she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, "I'm gonna send you to the best doctor that's a specialist in that field." And when he sent her to him, she wasn't happy at all with him. And she went back to him and said, if he's the best, send me to the worst. <laughs> well, the, the next one helped her. And, and he, be, he stayed to be her specialist doing as long as he was around. But, but you see, sometimes we try to get to our places with money. We buy our way into places. And, and this time, money would not do it. Uh, there's another lesson for me here. Sometimes you need to listen to folks who seemingly to you might be a nobody. You ever dealt with folk who tell you that, 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 that uh, something and you say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not, a, they're not in this field. There was a man riding down the road, and he was lost before the days of GPS. And he, he, he stopped, saw this little boy on the road, and he asked the boy where this place was, and the man, the boy told him where it was. And the man said, now you sure that that's where I'm supposed to go? And the boy said, why are you questioning me? He said, well, you, you, you're a boy, you don't know. He said, well, at least I'm not lost. <laughs> See, sometimes, we won't listen to folk who got good information because we think they don't know what they're talking about. This man, this mistress, this woman who was the maid, she wasn't anybody in the life of the folks, and, and yet she knew something that could help this man. Sometimes we need to, to listen to folk just because they don't have an education. You might ought to listen. Just because they haven't been where you've been, you might ought to listen. And sometimes we miss our blessing because we won't listen to folk who got information that we need because we think they don't know what they're talking about. Another lesson here for me, and that was that sometimes uh, you need to go to someone with more influence to get done what you want. He went to the king. See, sometimes many of us are afraid to go to folks because we think they up here. You, sometimes you need to go to folks. Sometimes the folk won't, won't ask the pastor to pray for him. I, I ain't got, he, he's too busy. Uh, he he can't come to he can't come to me. He won't deal with me. He he deals with the high up folks. Yes, I met folks like that. But sometimes we miss a blessing because we need to go to somebody who can help us. Some folk hate to go to doctors. I don't want to go to the doctor. Uh, bad as I hate shots. If I'm sick a day or two, I'm going to the doctor. Because that doctor knows more than I know. Now, if I go and he gives me some pills, I'm going to take them. I've seen folk go to the doctor and get a pill, get a whole bottle of pills, and they're sitting on the shelf. They don't do nothing if they ain't in you. See, many of us, well, I, I don't like that. I, I hate to take medicine. Well, if you hate to take medicine, don't even bother to go to the doctor. If you're going to go, take what they say. Try it. What you got to lose? Well, if you need a blessing and somebody tells you how to be blessed, 
you, many of us miss our blessing questioning whether that what I ought to do or not. He could not pull off this trip on his own. The king had to write a letter and, and do some things that, that got him there. Well, the, 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 the other thing that comes to me is that, that your blessing, your healing, may not come like you expected. This man expected Elijah to come out and wave a wand or say something or bless him, put his hands on him, and, and he would be healed. And, and Elijah, Elijah did not do that. Many of us uh, expect some miracle to happen. We miss miracles because we're looking for them in a different form. The fact that I woke up this morning is a miracle. The fact that I feel love is a miracle. That we, we miss our blessings, our miracles, because we are looking for something fabulous, something spectacular, and God is working miracles in your life day by day. The man is told to go down to the Jordan, this dirty river. Now, how are you going to be clean in dirty water? How are you going to get your blessing out of this dirty water? Well, for me, this dirty water represents some things around us. Sometimes you have to deal with folk. You know, sometimes a sinner can give you a blessing. That's dirty water for many of us. We don't, we, we, we don't, you know, many of us have been taught, you don't go down to this place, you don't go down to that place because that's where the sinners are. Yeah, you, you stay away from them. Well, see, Sometimes your blessing is in the dirty water. Some of us are dealing with dirty money. You ever, you ever, I, I remember one time I was pastoring a church some years ago, and, and this, this uh, racist church down the street decided to give us some money. They wanted to help out the poor folk. My church wasn't that poor, but, you know, we always act poor, and so they, they wanted to give us some money. And some of the members got to talking about whether to take the money or not. Some of the deacons and trustees, when they were talking, they said, we ought not take their money. And, and uh, another one finally said, we're going to take their dirty money. I don't care where they got it from, it spins like the rest. Well, you see, I've heard churches sometimes talk about it. If a, if, a, if a drug dealer came in here, would y'all say, no, we ain't going to take that because we don't want that dirty money? Well, uh, you see, we don't know where that money comes from. I don't know where you've been. Some of us look clean. Some of us know how to dress up. Some of us, like, like me, uh, I work on cars sometimes, and I get my hands all dirty, and I, I clean them up, and it, it, except for my fingernails, it looks like I haven't been in any, any uh, dirt. So you don't know where I've been. I don't know where you've been. But you see, that's where... We sometimes get our blessing in things that are not what they appear. This man was told to, if you want a blessing from God, to go down to the river, to this dirty river, and bathe yourself seven times. The text says that he immersed himself. I'm sure that, that after the first time, he looked and said, I'm no different. Second time, he looked and he was expecting to see a little better. No different. Third, fourth, fifth time, he did it. No different. Uh, if I've done it five times and I don't see any different, why am I going to do it two more? 
except that that was the commandment that was given to him to go down there. They, the, his, his, uh, his, uh, those folks with him said, if he had told you something hard to do, if, he, if he'd have told you to give me a million dollars, you'd have done it. Because when you are sick, you will do anything to get well. Well, the, the, you know, sometimes many of us, uh, we got insurance, we go to the best doctor, we'll go around. But, but not just about health. Sometimes many of us are sick. We're sick in sin. Sometimes we're sick mentally. We, we are stressed out and, and, and we don't know what to do. You sometimes have to go to be bathed in those things and out of that you get your healing. See, sometimes God uses ordinary things. God uses those things that we would see as negative to bring about positive. Sometimes God has a way that's mighty sweet that moves in ways that I never thought. I've been some places, done some things that I never thought I would do, but God made a way. And sometimes I've been in places where folks criticize me talked about me, scandalized my name, but you, when you keep going with God, the blessings will come. Sometimes it's out of that stuff. Many of us have lived through racism to rise to be better off. Just as you go through racism and rise, you have to sometimes go through sin and rise. So sometimes we are busy criticizing folks who are down and out when in fact, they just might be going through. We have to learn how to go through and, and, and trust God and let God have his way. Many of us want the easy way out. We, we would ra much rather go the easy route. Give me, the, give me the, the, the smooth road rather than going down the, the rough side of the mountain. Sometimes going down the rough side, you, you, is, is, you get the blessings of that. that that's what a, makes a roller coaster what it is. It, it isn't going up the hill is, that, that gives you the fascination. If you like roller coasters, it isn't going up the hill that makes things happen. It's when you're going down. And, and that, that, that going down is much faster than going up. Well, you see, sometimes for us, when we are going up the hill of life, and life gets rough, many of us are ready to give up. I wonder why, why are we doing this? Wonder why when, when, when things don't turn out like I want it to, it seems, I just got to stay with the trip. When he went, and he, he went in the water five times, six times and, 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 and was ready to give up, I'm sure. But when he went the seventh time, the blessing came. The blessing of that dirty water cleaned him up. And sometime when we stay with God in the midst of our troubles and, and when we wonder why and why did this happen and why have I got to do this, you ever had children or grandchildren or children around you and, and you tell them to do something and they ask you why? Well, you see, many of us came up in the day when you didn't ask them why. You just did it. But now children will ask you, why I got to do this? Why? And, 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 and parents start explaining to them. And in their minds, it doesn't calculate why this makes sense. You might as well just go and tell them because I said so. Because it isn't going to calculate to them. And, and sometimes that's true in life and in the church even. Many of us as Christians want to know why. Why y'all taking this off? Why y'all do? Well, see, sometimes your blessing is not in what they do, is what you do. This man's blessings, Naaman's blessings, came out of going on and doing what he was told to do. And out of that, the seventh time, he looked. And oh boy, he had smooth skin. 
skin that was nice and soft and, and, and looked like he'd never been through something. See, many of us, when, when we've been through, when we come out on the other side, we look like we've never been through. That's why sometimes I don't look like what I've been through. Because God has brought me through, and if I follow God, when God says, do it, if I do it, I'm going to come out looking better than I did before. God will make a way. That, that for me is a lesson out of this text, that, that God made a way for the man. Now, now, now notice that, that, that uh, Elisha didn't claim it for himself. He simply said to go and do it. Now, now uh, I didn't have this read, but, but if you go on and read the text, the man comes back and offers to pay Na uh, Elisha, and Elisha refused. Because sometimes, many of us, we, we, we're willing to pay, and the doctors take it, but when you pay, you think that you have done something and deserved it, and Elisha taught the man a lesson I didn't do this. God did it. So don't pay me for what God did. See, many of us are, are ready to take credit for something. Look what I did. When in fact God did it. We need to take less credit for what God has done. And let God take the credit for what God has done. When God does it, then you come out victorious and the person comes out victorious. That's why I'm glad to be a blessing to folks. I'm glad to help somebody along the way because it's not out of my doing. It's not that I'm getting all of the glory, but God gets the glory. And out of that, I get the blessing. I, 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 don't, I don't need the glory this morning. I need the blessing. See, many of us are, are caught up, and many folks are caught up in glory. I, uh, I, I look at my, my, my former president. He, he caught up in his own glory. And, and he's going to miss his blessing if he ain't careful. Many of us sometimes get caught up in our own glory. When, when somebody says, you sang a good song, you, it ain't, you are not get caught up in glory. If somebody says that you preached a good sermon, Reverend, you ought not get caught up in the glory. When somebody says to you, thank you, that, that you gave like you did, don't get caught up in the glory. Because you just get caught up in the blessing. Because when you do what God says, you don't need the glory. You need the blessing. And I'm glad this morning to have the blessings of the Lord. That's why when I look around and see I realize how many miracles God has done with me, through me, and for me. Because God is in the blessing business. I want God to get the glory. I just need the blessings. Thank God for the blessings this morning. Because when I look around and see how the Lord has blessed me, I'm thankful this morning for God's blessings.
go to God in prayer. We ask God's blessing upon us this morning as we look to him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. There is much to pray for. We pray for individuals. Brother Lewis Plumpton, who lost his brother this week at sea. We pray for Sister Betsy Meyer, who is very ill at the moment. We pray for those who are dealing with loved ones' loss. We pray for those that are sick. God's blessings upon each of us as we go forth. We pray for the politicians of the world who simply are dealing with politics and not so much our lives. That God might bring healing and wholeness to them. God is able. God will sustain us. We come as, low, as humble as we know how. We come with our heads bowed and our hearts turned towards you. Asking you, the God of our salvation, to first of all deliver us. Sometimes with our own selfishness, deliver us. Sometimes with our own uh, uh, things that are within us, deliver us and make us whole. Sometimes, God, we know that. Sometimes you bring us through the valley. You bring us through the valleys and the shadow of death. You bring us through those hard times. You bring us through the dirty water to get us out to the clean water. God, we ask you, oh God, to be with us this morning. To watch over us and take care of us. To nourish us with your love. Be with us and keep us in your care. Guide us and protect us. And always guide us and be with us. Bless us and keep us in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone.